Hello everyone, Tina here. I hope your day is going wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I get to share a project with you for Paper Tray Ink and we are using the brand new Wonderful Wreath stamp set. Love this because you can one, customize your own wreaths, but you don't have to because there's some beautiful wreaths. There's some twigs, some leaves, some eucalyptus, and of course you get some accent flowers and some sentiments in here too. So we're going to, there's a coordinating die set that will die cut out everything also. So what we're going to do is create a wreath that is a double layer. So we're going to use this beautiful leaf wreath along with some pines behind it. So let's jump in and do some stamping. We're going to take both of these out. We're going to use some elements from both. We're going to stamp. We're going to bring in our stamping positioner. And then we're going to stamp the wreath first here. And I love this one. We're going to bring in some cardstock. I'm going to lightly tack it to my stamping positioner so it doesn't move. Let's place this on here. Add our wreath. And then for my wreath, Normally, of course, you can use green for the holidays, but I'm going to mix greens and browns. We're going to go for a rustic style look. My brown will be a, the Honey Nut ink. We're going to go over our image with Honey Nut. And I'm going to stamp this. And I love the way this looks. Now, I'm going to bring in another ink. This is Olive Twist. And I'm going to go around some of the edges on the inside. and on the outside of this honey nut wreath that we just created. Just want to make sure that there's no harsh lines. So we're creating a brown and a green wreath. We'll stamp this. How pretty. Now I'm going to clean off my stamp and we're going to stamp some more of the leaves. In our stamp set, there's a three-piece berry, and this is a layering berry, so I'm going to use my acrylic block, and this is where Pure Poppy ink works perfectly for this. And I want five berries. I think an odd number of berries works great. And I mentioned that the berries were layering, so we're going to clean this off and bring in the second layer, which looks like this. Over my berries, and then I'm going to pick it up with the block, and when I pick it up, this way I know my block needs to be straight. It's just easier when you're stamping multiples. I'm going to be using Olive Twist to stamp my berries here. As long as I keep my block straight up and down, I know that we are good to go. So there's our berries. They kind of look like cranberries with those that second layer. Okay, we're going to take this out, put it off to the side, and do a little bit more stamping. I'm going to bring in another piece of cardstock. And for this one, I'm going to use our pine needles. Okay. For pine needles, I'm I'm going to use our prairie grass. I think this is a good one. And we'll stamp this. Wonderful. Don't those look so real? I love that. Instead of, um, I'm going to stamp these a few times. So I'm just going to scoop my paper down. Better scoot it down a little bit more. And we're going to stamp again. I'm going to put my pine needles back. And there's one more long pine needle in here. And it's this one on this side. This one. 
I'm going to stamp this as well. So let's, there's only, you know what, I'm going to use an acrylic block for this one. Let's take this out. And then for my final pine needle, I'm bringing in Simply Chartreuse. And I'm going to stamp this. We're going to go five times with this pine one. Maybe we can fit a couple on here. I think I may have got that one a little too close, so I'm going to stamp one more. Okay. So all of our elements are good to go. We're going to go ahead and take the coordinating dies. So I'm going to run everything through my die cut machine, and when I'm all done, I'll be right back. I have everything die cut and ready to go. Um, and before we build our wreath, I want to create a background. So I'm going to zoom back out. And I'm going to put all of these off to the side. And then I'm going to bring in one of my background cover plates. This is the cover plate decorative circles. I think this is so pretty. And I'm going to take a cardstock panel. I'm going to line my cover plate decorative circles over a piece of white cardstock and then I'm going to run this through my die cut machine. So here is my decorative circles. So pretty. I love the dotted details in this. I'm going to flip it around and using my glue I'm going to add it to a piece of spring moss cardstock. This is an A2 panel, so it's four and a quarter inches wide by five and a half inches tall. Let's go ahead and glue our, we're going to leave this white. Okay, we got glue behind our cover plate. Let's go ahead and adhere this to our spring moss cardstock. So pretty. I'm going to flip this around and use my tape runner and adhere this to my card base. Okay, so our background's done and now we need a sentiment. So before we build our wreath, you'll notice I did die cut out a circle. My circle is slightly smaller than my leaf wreath. This way we can stamp our sentiment in here. And here we have we have joyful wishes is one sentiment, but I used my scissors and separated them. I trimmed them into two. If you don't like to do stamp surgery, then what you can do is um, mask off. But I didn't mind trimming it because there was quite a big bit of space between them both. So it didn't affect my joyful whatsoever. And if I do want to stamp them together, I can always just line them up. Let's ink this up with our black ink. I'm going to use our true black. And this wishes this is going to go in the center of our circle. Like so. Now we have Christmas and birthday. So you can make a real pretty birthday wreath. There's holiday. I'm going to take Christmas. I'm going to pick it up with my acrylic block. And then I have a strip of white cardstock here. I'm going to stamp my Christmas with my poppy ink. I'm going to stamp it in the middle because I'm going to fishtail the ends. Wonderful. I'm going to use my scissors and we're just going to fishtail, create a fishtail banner on the left and right. Okay, using our circle, what we're going to do is take our darker pine needles and I'm going to, oops, we use my glue and we are going to create a wreath. The circle is a great guide. 
I went ahead and die cut out and stamped a couple more of my, my larger pine needles. Turns out I just didn't have the right amount. Okay. And I think they are, these are going to layer beautifully together. I'm going to do a little bit more adjusting on the very bottom. Wonderful. After we have this done, I'm going to remove the release paper off of our leaf wreath. And I put four foam squares behind here. And then we're going to add our leaf wreath right on the top. Like so. And then we can lift it all up. Just making sure that our wishes is centered. This is what the back looks like. We have our smaller pine needles. Now what we get to do is tuck these in. I did put small foam squares behind it. These pieces are a good way to cover up the stems of the, the larger pine needles. I'm not pressing down um, just yet because I want to play around with our placement. For example, I think I can spread this one out a little bit more. We're going to add some glue behind our wreath and then we can add this on our card base. I think that's a good spot. And then we can add our sentiment. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over and add a, a few small foam squares right down the center. Now before we add our berries, I want to make um, a bow. We're going to bring in some natural twine and I am going to double it up. So we will double this up and then just tie a bow with this. I trim the tails of our natural twine and then using a glue dot we can secure our bow. We're going to add it to our, our green leaf. And then we can secure our bow kind of at an angle. Don't you love how that looks? And then we need a button. So let me grab my vintage buttons. I'm going to be using the Paper Tray Ink Vintage Button Collection. This, these are there's lots in here. I'm going to put it on my craft mat. I want a small button. I think the smaller ones like to go to the bottom, so I had to take them all out. Okay, let's put in a blue, um, add our glue dot behind our button. And of course, if you want to thread the button, you could, but I'm just going to put it right on top in the center of our natural twine here. Okay, now we have our berries. Let's go ahead and place these. I think five was the perfect amount to bring in a little bit of color to our, to our project. Okay, I am going to add a little bit of dimension to these berries by using my glossy accents. Now, the, the berries are a little tricky whenever you have three berries. Um, if you get your your glossy accents too close together, it just creates a clump. So I'm going to try not to make it to where they, um, my little berries touch each other. Okay. The glossy accent stripe goes on a little bit cloudy, but when it dries, it dries clear. And I try to keep them separate, so when they dry, they actually look like little cranberries. But that is my project today for paper training. I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you soon.